Hey guys, it is Danny and welcome to this update's video on the tropics. And so in this video, I'm going to be giving you the latest on activity that is currently taking place across the Eastern Pacific as well as the Atlantic. And so before I go into details... <music> Alright, so let us kickstart things with the Eastern Pacific. So as of right now, we do have a new tropical depression, Tropical Depression 16E. And so, a para mi oyentes de español, daré un breve desglose. Uh, no soy el mejor en el idioma y pido disculpas por cualquier mala pronunciación. Tenemos una nueva depresión tropical frente a la costa occidental de México. Se espera que eventualmente se convierta en tormenta tropical Pamela y es probable que se convierta en huracán. A partir de ahora, no hay alertas ni advertencias, pero es probable que salgan en los próximos días. El noreste de México probablemente se verá afectado por fuertes lluvias, lo que provocará inundaciones y fuertes vientos. Por lo que si se encuentra ahí, tome las precauciones necesarias y manténgase a salvo. Alright, so here we have this tropical depression and as of right now, sustained winds are 35 miles per hour and it is accelerating to the west-northwest at 16 miles per hour. And so during the next couple of days, strengthening is expected of the system and probably by early on Tuesday, it is likely that we will have it becoming a hurricane. And so as of right now, it is not expected to become a major hurricane, but at but I wouldn't be surprised if it manages to achieve that status because it is expected to have peak winds just shy of a category 3. And so wind gusts are usually a bit higher than the sustained winds. So if you're in portions of northwestern Mexico, you're likely to experience some dangerous conditions when the system is expected to make landfall, which is going to be near the end of this week. So probably late Wednesday going into Thursday. And also as it makes landfall, fortunately, it's not going to be moving very slow because an increase in acceleration is anticipated at that time and so looking at it on satellite here we have it uh, not very organized right now but it is getting in shape we do see some areas of some very deep convection associated with the system so as time goes by it is going to be looking a lot better on satellite and eventually we're going to have this potentially becoming a very significant cyclone and so guys even though there are no watches and warnings currently in place they will probably be sent out probably by the next few days or so and you will know if your area is to be affected and of course i'm going to be keeping you updated on the latest as time goes by and so now let's go ahead and hop over into the atlantic basin and so we're seeing here that we have a single disturbance which is invest 92l it has been lingering around for quite a while now and as of right now it has a 30% chance to potentially develop into a tropical cyclone. So actually, the chance is decreasing for this system. And the reason for that is due to uh, dry air as well as strong upper-level winds that are expected to take a toll. So those are unfavorable conditions. And so once they're going to be uh, lingering around this disturbance here, then we won't see any development of this. So it's just going to be there. And in terms of the Carolinas, there might be some periods of some rainfall now and then, but nothing major is anticipated from this invest and so now let's go ahead and take a look at the rest of the basin and so we're seeing here that uh, we do have two tropical waves on their way to the caribbean well one is actually entering right now so this first wave is affecting portions of the lesser Antilles, probably with some heavy rainfall at times but nothing very major is going to be anticipated from this as it makes its way westward so it is going to be also affecting portions of puerto rico and hispaniola as we head throughout the early part of this week so if you're there uh, be prepared for some increased moisture in your region which is going to be resulting in some rainfall in some areas and so to the south east of that tropical wave we have another one that is accelerating westward and so these waves are not marked as disturbances as of right now and so the reason for that is because of the current persistent conditions because if we had the opposite of what is currently there then no doubt that we could even have development of these waves and so as i speak about that let us go ahead and take a look at current conditions across the basin 
Okay, so first up, let us start off with the Saharan dust map. And so we have the different colors that indicate how dense the dust is. So once once we have that light yellow shade, that means that there isn't a lot of dust. It's not so dense. But as we head towards the dark orange and the red and that pink shade, that indicates a lot of dust. And so that is what prevents tropical development. Any dry atmosphere is what prevents development because tropical cyclones need moisture. So without that, then we won't see development or intensification of any systems out there. And so we're seeing here that we have some Saharan dust that is spreading across portions of the Caribbean. Uh, Hispaniola, Puerto Rico are areas that are currently being affected. Maybe some some parts of the Lesser Antilles probably having some uh, hazy conditions now and then, but nothing significant uh, because this is not a large or very dense plume of dust that is making its way by. And that tropical wave is not in that region of a very dry air so we have some convection being associated with it but the moment we have dry air infiltration then we will have a shower and thunderstorm activity starting to dissipate and so now let's go ahead and take a look at the wind shear map and so we have the different colors that indicate the favorability of the shear so we have the green that means favorable the yellow that means neutral and the red that means unfavorable so we see here that we have a lot of unfavorable shear extending across most of the main development regions so in the vicinity of the caribbean the gulf of mexico even up to where we have 92 lb in we have quite a bit of unfavorable shear that is there so this is one of the reasons we're not going to have our waves to be marked as disturbances because all this uh, strong these strong upper level winds are going to prevent all those thunderstorms from developing nicely so we won't really have anything become of those waves but they're just going to be blobs of shower and thunderstorm activity out there and so guys aside from our waves and that disturbance in vest 92 l we don't have much uh, going on across the atlantic basin and so guys things are expected to remain relatively calm across uh the atlantic for probably the next couple of days or so but there is the chance that we could have another disturbance or probably even more storms as we're going to be heading into the latter part of this hurricane season so so once conditions start to get favorable and we have disturbances, once we have those waves, then it is likely that we might have them being marked as disturbances once conditions ahead of them look favorable that are going to likely support development and so guys that is really it for this updated video on the tropics and so again if you're in portions of mexico especially the northwestern section you're likely to be affected by what is currently tropical depression 16 but likely to become tropical storm and hurricane pamela and so guys if you found this video to be quite informative please give a thumbs up and you can also share your thoughts with me in the comments or ask a question. I will try to respond as best and as soon as I can. And just remember to always be otherwise and of course, I will keep you updated as time goes by.